Hey guys, Watley here with Actionable Insights. Uh, I got Seth Harrison here to my right, your left, and Todd Tyler from Ramsco Interlink. So uh, this morning, something kind of exciting for us, we're going to do an open box video. Uh, this happened all kind of fortuitously, leads back to a conversation that Alan James and uh, Actionable Insights was having as we attempted to create an insight sheet to make the connection between uh, their specialty drying and performance drying equipment with uh, Xactimate's 20,000 line items. And so in our experience, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what line items actually reconcile with what performance drying equipment. And we've been working for the last year and a half to resolve that for a lot of the performance drying players. Uh, as a result, uh, that conversation with Alan James, he oversees the UK, uh, has got us connected with uh, Jacob Hibbard. And he is uh, nice enough to send us out some equipment here for an open box. We actually don't know what's in this stuff, so it's going to be a surprise for us too. Um, somehow, uh, even not knowing exactly what's in there, uh, Todd's got enough faith in this equipment. What are you going to let us do in here in a minute? We are going to flood out a whole wall and then redry it. So uh, somehow we duped him into letting us flood out his room here in the back and we're going to see what this performance drying equipment is. We're going to treat it as a uh, class 2 cat 1 loss and we're not going to remove the cove basing and going to see what this DBK equipment can do uh, to dry things out in place. That's generally the whole idea of performance drying equipment to the extent possible and we're really excited to see what it can do. So, uh, I don't know, let's get cracking. We're going to open up some of these boxes. Check it out. Uh, here's what we ended up getting uh, from our boys at DBK. This is the Drymatic 2 here, of course, out front. We had an idea this one was in here, per the logo on the outside of the box. Uh, definitely a big upgrade with the Drymatic 2 from the Drymatic 1. It's about a quarter of the size, half the weight, and it rolls around now, so that's pretty sweet. Looking forward to see what that thing can do. Hopefully we can get it programmed without any trouble. Uh, what connects to that is all of our lay flat ducking. So one nice feature is the heater outlet is this mylar here and it looks different than the room intake which has more of a duct tape sheen to it and the outside exhaust here and the outside intake. So kind of cool that they separated those out and uh, made them different sheens so you can kind of tell what's going on. Interested to see how they hook up if they all can hook up universally or if they only go in one of the spots. Um, let's see here. The Dramatic Boost Boxes. So these are the ones that didn't have anything on the box. We didn't know what was in them, so there's two of these babies. We're gonna need to back these up with an air mover. So in a minute, we're gonna go pick out an air mover. I need a couple new air movers for my shop, so we're gonna go do a little shopping with uh, Todd over in his warehouse and go pick some air movers that I'll play nicely with these boost boxes. It looks like you could plug in just about any air mover to it, but I assume there's some that fit a little better than others. You wouldn't want the air mover to be out here. Of course, this wouldn't work with the axial. Uh, so but anyhow, we're gonna pick one that plays nice. Back here, we got the mat. So you got a three meter by one and a half meter. So this is a nine foot by four and a half foot mat. That's a floor drying mat. This one, I'm really excited to see how it works. This is a wall drying mat, so it's a triangle here. And so when we blow it up, it'll sit against the wall here nice and dry out the cone basing and the wall, hopefully. Otherwise, Todd's gonna be pissed at us if we can't get this thing done. And back here is another floor mat. And so Todd was pointing this out to me a minute ago. Kind of a cool feature is when we hook up these boost boxes, we can shove them in any part of uh, the floor mat. So we can put them on this side or that side. It gives us a lot of flexibility when we deploy these if you're working in tight space. So, you know, as we all know in this biz, every single job is different. So nice to have that flexibility. And here's some Velcro. And I think this connects 
the boost boxes to the mats in ways I don't totally understand, but are probably very necessary. So anyhow, uh, next we gotta go do some shopping. So uh, Todd, let's head on over and let's go pick out an air mover. All right guys, so Todd's gonna hook us up with an air mover that'll play nice with this uh, DBK boost box. So let's go on down the line. Uh, what is that, a dry ease down there at the end? So we got a dry ease, the Bell Pros. We got a Pro Kim Triad, we got a Phoenix Air Max, we got two different types of Cyclones, and we got your Omni Dry 2.9, which is just your typical uh, snail fan. Cool. Uh, here, let's see which one matches up. I would say, looking at this, you got a flat surface. So all of these do have a flat surface, so we're looking good there. And we're just gonna line these up and see what fits. Here, you got a, you got a good fit there. That one covers the whole entire thing. So there's nothing open. Nope. So our dry ease fan would work fine with this one. Underneath, it's tight. You've got a good fit. Moving on to the Pro Cam Triad. It doesn't quite cover the whole thing, but it's there. If you move it, it's a, it's, a, it's a tight fit. Just not quite as wide, but you only got just a little bit hanging out. Other than that, it's pretty good as well. Let's move over here to Phoenix. We're looking at this Phoenix. Mm. Phoenix is a little bit lower. It's at an angle if you look at it from the side too. Yep, it's going to be going right. It's a little bit lower, and we have a, we have an angle, so you're going to lose I some air. There's a lot of air there. You're going to lose a lot of air, so that one might not work. And then we'll go over here to the cyclone. Yeah, I think cyclone. it's the flat fit that's the most. Yeah, important, cyclone right? matches up with that pretty tight. Yeah, that's right on. You'll get the max out of that. Let's go on over to the smaller cyclone. And what's the difference with this cyclone with that cyclone? This cyclone, you can put a HEPA filter on here. On the top of this, yeah, uh, it's a multi-speed, yeah. where this one is a single speed. It's just gonna be a smaller one. This one is actually just a little bit noisier than this one, Okay, but has good airflow. This has a really, really good airflow. What amps is that one running? It is a 2.9, right around there. Oh, 2.9, so that's yeah. up there. Yeah, it's up there. So, so it's pushing. Is, is that what the quieter one? Is it lower amp? I think that is closer to two amps. Yeah. So big difference. And I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then um, the and that, that, that fits pretty good. That was so we got a little gap on the side. Yeah, you you you're missing these two slots, but, but at it's least tight. it's a flat fit. And then you got your Omni Dry, your you know your snail fan. Mm -hmm. And you got some you got some room up here. Yeah. And it's actually flush in the bottom, so that's actually pretty that, good. That one will work. That one will work. So the only yeah. one that really doesn't play nice is the Phoenix. It's the Phoenix. That's the only one that doesn't play nice with it. So generally, you can assume, guys, that most any of your air movers will work. Uh, keep an eye out for the Air Max Phoenix. Nice piece of equipment. Just doesn't seem to to work with work play nice with the boost box it's because it exhausts at an angle and there's a sizable space down at the bottom. So, all right. Uh, what am I buying? Which one do I want? I gotta get two from you today. Well, I mean, if you like the multi-speed, the dry ease in the far left down there in the end, that one looks like it would work really good. Or if you want another multi-speed one that you can use for multi multiple purposes, the cyclone would work really good with it as well. Those two, I think, fit the, the tightest, but those two would probably be the best. Multi-functioning and for this system. Okay. So I would recommend those. All right, perfect. Well, we'll see you in a minute what Todd talked me into. All right, guys, we've got our MO290 here. We're going to check it out and see what damage was done by our man Seth Harrison. So he dumped 10 gallons of water into this wall through the top plate up top here a few minutes ago. And so one thing that you got to take a, uh, keep an eye out for is if you have a leak and you think you've breached the outside of the wall, if you use your invasive moisture meter here, it's going to tend to give you readings, like right now, 25% because that was a little bit of a, a drip of water I saw here. So you got to kind of understand how these things work. And so much as if you want to use your external moisture meter, if the loss just happens. So the non-invasive meter works well if the loss is kind of set in for 10-12 hours and things have had a chance to really saturate. 
Uh, but if it just happened, your exterior moisture meter is going to be the way to go. So, as you might suspect, we need to kind of establish our scope, determine what areas really need the drying mat, need the special attention. Uh, I've always loved this MO290. I always come back to it, but one thing that drives me nuts is, you guys know who have this, the exterior meter, the pins, they tend to get loose all the time. Uh, so, anyhow, let's go down here, 99% below the cove base, and then above the cove base, uh, we're running at 27.9. And so what's happened is, this water is going to be wicking up. A lot of it's in the sill plate right now, but since this just took place maybe 10 minutes ago, the water hasn't had much of an opportunity to wick up. And it was a lot of water really quickly. So this was a very sudden loss that was shut off immediately. No repeated leakage and seepage here, which is why you don't see the outsized moisture ratings up the wall. So we're building control 7.3%, we're running 17 right here in the wall, and the farther I dump uh, the external meter in the wall, the higher it gets. So there is quite a lot of water in this wall. I suspect there's a lot of it behind that cove base here. And the trick for this drying application is can we really dry this out without removing the co cove base? Performance drying equipment is all about like the minimal amount of damage possible. And this would be the full expression of what performance drying can do. If you can leave everything exactly in place, deploy the right equipment, knock it out, and have it good to go. So um, Cat 1 environments, the, the really the true application for this performance drying equipment. So let's see how far this water runs. Kind of establish a scope for you guys visually. It stops at this door casing. Here, and let's see what we got. All right, still running 26. And on down to 17. I don't know, I feel right here, we good to go. There's a little water that jumped here. A water's kind of interesting, wave least resistance. It'll do things you don't necessarily expect, but there's not enough water over here in this wall, I think. Yeah, I'm only getting 13%. So that can be addressed just by deploying the dry mat too and the ambient heat uh, will be able to extract the moisture from the wall. When you add this much heat into an area such as this, the building material tends to release uh, the water pretty readily. And that's one of the tricks to adding heat to uh, a dry out is that when you accelerate those particles it'll have a tendency to uh, go ahead and have the building material like release the water which is what you want and that's why you know they've got the boost box here and the dramatic too so we're going to set this stuff up and uh, hopefully it goes well wish us luck because we haven't done this one before but we're going to stumble through it and make it happen see we got this thing set up uh, to be honest we had a few challenges a few hiccups but we discovered some things along the way that kind of made it easier uh, initially we thought we were going to set up containment on this wall up here so we thought we were going to do a containment with the zipper and then uh, that our outside exhaust and intake were going to be run and remember when you run that outside exhaust and intake they can't be near each other so we were going to run through there but then we recognized that with the drop ceiling we can just go ahead and toss the outside intake in the room and then exhaust uh, the outside exhaust up above the drop ceilings. We have 22 feet, foot ceilings here at this warehouse. Uh, Todd here uh, compelled us to pick up these new cyclones. What, in your view, Todd, made this the right fit for the dramatic tube? Or so the, the boost box, rather. So the, the cyclone, uh, they're 1.9 amp. 325 CFM and they're a quarter horsepower. So we got plenty of air coming through and with only 1.9 amps we're not worried about um, breaking circuits or popping circuits. Right. And so that was ideal. What we recognized though is we couldn't daisy chain 
into the boost boxes out of the cyclones because we were running a max of 10 amp US here out of the back of the cyclone. And so these boost boxes are running 11.9, so it's close, but we had to go and find another circuit for these uh, boosters. Uh, also, when we connected the boosters initially, we left out this black strap here pulled apart. So we didn't know what this did. We just thought it was an extra piece. Usually when there's an extra piece, there's a problem. Uh, Todd came walking in with these in his hand going, what the hell, guys? And uh, <laughs> that's when we recognized we had a problem. <laughs> and so without that, it wasn't staying on the mat really well. And you might have seen in the time-lapse video, like we initially tried to run this with just one booster and one air mover, and there wasn't enough CFM to get the wall mat elevated and up the wall. So we had to introduce um, the other booster and the other mover. So in the spirit of like the inside sheets, we want to you know be as efficient as possible and not be overbilling the carriers for our equipment. But it looks like if you're running this kind of square footage of mats, be it floor mats or wall mats, you're going to need two boosters. You can, so this would have been fine for one mat, but when we introduce the wall mat, we're in trouble. We did something kind of unique here. I don't know if this is a best practice, but it, it helped it get, kind of keep the meter. So we used two connectors on the far side. I think you could get away with one. Um, but since we were having a little trouble with this expanding up the wall, we decided to use one here and then one over here. So again, I think you could get away with one, but we had it. One cool thing is the Dramatic 2 is actually running right now while we're talking. He's so quiet. Oh, I mean, you can't, you can't hear. I think this is one of the quietest pieces of equipment I've ever seen. So I'm sure you guys can hear a little bit in the video. But for equipment, my goodness, I, we kept it on for this aspect of the video to give you an idea how quiet it really is. Um, hopefully the mic's not picking up a bunch of noise because on our end, it's really quiet. So that thing's doing its thing, uh, measuring the relative humidity. And we've got over here the room intake on the far side of the room right here and you want kind of a cyclone effect and then you've got your heater outlet so this is getting nice and spicy nice and hot over here and we're going to blow that heat right into this area so if you remember there was a little bit of water that was seeped in on the rug and so i think by putting that heat there we're good to go i also want to experiment with two things and it probably um when i've been doing performance driving in the past when i use uh infrared heat lamps the 1500 watts I've melted coke base before. So what I want to experiment with is we're going to turn this equipment all the way up, uh, running at 122 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit uh, out of the booster, and put the heat right here on the cove base. So let's see what happens. Uh, this way, in this controlled scenario, we generally know if we don't melt this cove base, then it's not going to happen to you guys. Yep. So uh, let's fire this thing up, see what it can do. Um, you know, we're 100% saturated down here along the sill plate. We'll come back in the morning. Have a look. Hey, hey, it's day two. We are back at Aramsco. The DVK Dramatic Equipment has been running for about 20 hours or so. So we're going to take some readings and see what kind of progress we're making in this tryout. All right, so let's take a look. As you can hear, it's loud. This equipment has been running, and it's running well. It is a sauna here. All right, we have reader here. We're going to sneak behind this wall and take some readings. It's day three. Came in today. The affected wall is still at about 60% or so, um, but the floor is very dry. So over the weekend, we're going to remove the floor mat and hook the boost boxes up directly to the wall mat and see what kind of progress we make and check back in on Monday. Hey guys, Watley here. I'm here with Seth from Actual Insights. We need a follow up on this baby. So uh, as you may remember, we started drying this thing out on Wednesday. Now it is Monday morning at noon. We're here because we're dry. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> thankfully, uh, it didn't happen as quick as we otherwise wanted, which uh, you know a lot of times will happen when you're doing a non-invasive dry out. Now keep in mind, if we have taken the drywall out and the co-basing out, we have this thing dry in three days, no problem. The reason this 
thing was a five day dry out to get it to this point. You monitored it, what, all weekend, every yep. day? Yep. Uh, and so it wasn't down to about nine, 10 percent if we run the invasive moisture meter down here. So we're running 10, 10, 3. And I think with our building control being 7 3, we'd call that substantially dry. There'll be a little bounce back. And you know that that's as far as you need to take it. It really doesn't require in our experience that you take any farther than that. Um, but all throughout the wall up here, it's all uh, measuring really the exact same as anywhere else. Now keep in mind the water was poured all the way down that wall, but running three, four, three point two here, it's the same. So when did you end up pulling the mat? Seth? Friday. Friday when I came in, I saw that the carpet was dry. So we figured it would be best to move the boost boxes and everything out directly to the wall mat so that we could get that dry as quickly as possible. And we were having trouble getting the wall mat all the way up against it? All the way up. So, I mean, it's natural air. It's pushing out against right. the wall. So when we had the mat in here, guys, the wall mat, the floor mat, it, it tended, the wall mat tended to push away about six, eight inches away from the wall and the cone base. And that's where you really wanted to direct that heat and energy at the bottom. And we found it a little tough, but when as soon as we remove the floor mat, pump this baby back in here, uh, then we were able to shove it up mm -hmm. right against the cove base and direct that air where you need it. Because really, that's where all the water is. It's trapped in that metal sill plate. These are metal studs in this case. Got to get it out of there. And that's where you want the energy going. Did you try to run it with one of the cyclones and one of the boost boxes? Uh, no, two. Okay. To get maximize efficiency, to really get this dry as quickly as possible, we ran both all weekend. So when I came in here this morning when you weren't around, mm -hmm. I ran it with just the one. And yes, it did blow up the wall mat mm -hmm. to the extent that you need it to. But it definitely wasn't as erect as you'd want. And to get it to perform, I think, optimally, again, two is where you want to go. Uh, especially until, I was talking to Jacob over the weekend, Seth, and he's telling us that they're going to come out with neoprene seals. So what's happening, guys, you get a little back pressure here uh, from the boost box as it goes to the mat, and then some of the air tends to be lost between the cyclone and the boost box. So Jacob was telling us, our, our U.S. distributor uh, of the DBK equipment, that they're going to come up with this neoprene, like, uh, like kind of wetsuit material yeah. to kind of seal the two. And so he says that that will otherwise be resolved, overcome by events, and they'll be shipping that out Q1. Q2 of 2018. So awesome. Coming. And they're coming with like four other new products that right now they have in the UK, they have in Australia. Um, and it's all along the lines of octopus type systems. And they've got another new style boost box, cool stuff. Here's the deal this was compelling because we dried this dang thing out and there's no damage, no destruction, no demo, no invasiveness. Non-invasive, right? Wall right. intact entirely. But it took longer. Yes. And it took a lot of monitoring, right? And it took a lot of equipment to do that. So we feel that in many cases, it might be more efficient to remove the cove base, drill uh, half-inch holes six, every 16 inches on center between the studs, and then run an octopus system. So guys, they have mats are kind of similar to this wall mat here but it's an octopus mat and it'll comes out and it cones out and then you can inject air right into uh, those individual areas. And then the new systems, even off of the Dramatic 2, you can inject right into the wall with a new kind of octopus system off the heater side. And that would have been ideal. Yeah. I would have loved to have done both here and then be hitting it. Because one of the areas that got the driest was wherever we put uh, the exhaust for the Dramatic 2. Mm -hmm. But if we were taking that Dramatic 2, really warm, right, dry air, pumping yeah. right into the wall, we'd have been done by Friday for sure when we've been out of here. But then the alternative side of that is now you got to bring the reconstruction crew in. Yep. Got to put the co-basing back on. You know, got to do some paint work probably. Now you're painting this wall, maybe you're painting that wall, so on. So I think I'm proud of what this equipment was able to do. Definitely. Especially in the context of like what it didn't do next door. Yeah. Yes, yeah, next door we had the traditional uh, equipment for mitigation to kind of give us a comparison of what this dry out would look like versus you know, a DU and an air mover. Right. Great thing. Yep, so we're running an XL Phoenix DU next door and a Cyclone snail air mover, and uh, it's gotten nowhere, guys. We're at uh, 60, 70%, whereas this is back down to 10. Right, so that's just the other side of the wall. 
And so that had every advantage too, mm -hmm. because we've been injecting all this heat and energy on this side of the wall, which had to be helping the far side of the wall. Yeah. But now we've got a lot of work to do to get that side dried out and over there. So anyhow, let's go have a look and uh, we'll show you what the other side of the wall looks like. All right guys, here's the other side of the wall. So the moment that we set up the TVK equipment on the other side, we set up a more traditional arrangement, which included uh, a cyclone, snail air mover here and a 200 max phoenix d here and so this has been blowing away going for the last five days it's now wednesday at about 12 30. so let's take a look at where we are at 97 and it's going to count down to probably in the 60s so one thing you got to watch in the mo290 is that when you initially put it in the external you'll really you know, get a spike you know and uh, but if you give it some time 30 seconds it'll normalize uh, so now we're down to 69 percent so substantially wet so keep in mind we're what eight nine percent substantially dry on the other side over here we got a lot of work to do so ultimately what's going to happen is we're going to end up taking the DBK equipment rearrange it on this side of the wall. So just wanted to give you guys that this, uh, there's some perspective there. This is the more traditional approach. Uh, really this approach is going to work of course much better if you do a traditional two foot flood cut and you'd be good to go. But that comes with all the added expense on the repair side. And a big shout out to Ramsco for all the support. Todd, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Todd. Yeah. It was a pleasure, guys. I think you put his, his job on the line for us. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, just, so, just a tiny bit. yeah, we're really grateful uh, to Interlink and Ramsco for all their support. Uh, both, you know, this week and in uh, months past, right? In years yeah. past. So they've always been a big supporter of us throwing our actual insights, uh, exact made events, and training events. So that's been huge. So, uh, and not to be forgotten, DBK, right? So our sponsor yes. for this video sent us a pallet full of equipment, cutting edge stuff, really fun for us to open boxes like Christmas around here, uh, to check it out and see what it could do. Uh, unfortunately, we're happy to report it performed really well and all of it seems like really high build quality. So we have no trouble endorsing uh, the products that they're putting forward. I mean, really, is there anything like higher quality than that? Style? No, actually, it's, it's like I was <laughs> impressed with it. I was very impressed. Yeah. So from the mats to the boost boxes to especially dramatics to that, there's a lot going on. A lot of thought went on that. A lot of engineering and really the build quality is quite high. Like it seems like you could beat the heck out of that stuff and it'd be just fine. Yep. Nothing's yep. rattling around. No. It's solid. So. Uh, anyhow, a lot to be thankful for. Guys, here's the deal. If you wouldn't mind, please leave comments down below if you have questions. Todd and I will do our best to get back to you. Please share, like this video. Uh, not just for us in a traditional sense, but for you guys too. Because if this goes well and it gets an appropriate amount of traction, then DPK is going to allow us to raffle this equipment off in November at our upcoming boot camp event. That's right. So, nice. uh, anyhow, looking forward to raffling or not, uh, raffling this off to the first 50 registrants for the Boost Camp event, if this all goes well. So please share the video, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, as for now, we're going back to work before uh, the CEO comes around. <laughs> <laughs>